Hello everyone. So in this particular video, we'll be discussing some important topics or some important areas of geography, right? Both physical geography and human geography. See, understand one thing. Out of physical and human geography, as I was analyzing the trend, and I think most of you people have also done that. So what you will realize is that physical geography is much, much more important than human geography. Physical geography is much, much more important than human geography. That's why when even I made my notes of this physical geography and human geography, there were around 26, 27 pages for physical geography notes and around two to three pages for, or in fact, four, five, four to five pages for human geography. So if you have paucity of time, focus more on physical part. So now we'll try to discuss some important areas which have been asked, like this particular question. You can see water bodies from north to south and why I have written it like this. What is the need? Because this is a UPSC PYQ. It has been asked earlier by UPSC. They have asked, they have given these water bodies and they have told you to arrange it from north to south. So Baffin Bay is the northernmost, near Greenland and North Sea, near Scandinavian countries and Adriatic Sea, near Greece and then Gulf of Aden. So if you want to see it, let's, let's, let's pause for a second and let's see this. Uh, just a second. Now you can see here. As you can see, this is your Baffin Bay. This is near Greenland. Then you have your North Sea, which is near Scandinavian countries. Then Adriatic Sea is here, near Greece. And then Gulf of Aden is here. So this is from North to South. Baffin Bay, North Sea, then your Adriatic Sea, and then Gulf of Aden. Cool, dude. Now let's talk about Indian monsoon. There are various factors which affect Indian monsoons. Right? What are those factors? That is, first of all, is Indian Ocean Dipole. It's a dipole. Indian Ocean Dipole is variation in Indian Ocean temperatures in Eastern Indian Ocean and Western Indian Ocean. And this is also called Indian Nino. It generally has a favorable impact on Indian monsoon. Uh, just a second. So this Indian Ocean Dipole, this particular thingy, they generally have a favorable impact on Indian monsoon. But there are different other factors also. Now, one thing which is very important for you to understand is Tropical Easterly Jet and El Nino. El Nino has an unfavorable impact. And what happens in El Nino? There's a trade wind, no trade wind, right? Which weakens in Central and Western Pacific. You will see a diagram of it and you will understand. So trade winds will weaken in Central and Western Pacific. So what, what is this SST? SST is sea surface temperature. So suppose uh, my diagram is not that good. So suppose this is our India, right? Now, this is here, let's say Madagascar, and there is a high pressure zone which is called Mascarene High, which forms here. So, in general scenario, suppose this is your Australia, right? And here you have South America, right? So, generally, in general condition, what happens? Here, the water gets warm, or here, a low pressure zone is created. And in, in here, in Peruvian side, high pressure zone is created. Suppose this is Peruvian side, or this is, right? And this is your Australia. So in normal scenario, this happens. Low pressure zone is created near Australia and high pressure zone is created near South American coast. But during El Nino, this reverses. Here, this is normal condition. During El Nino, what happens? Near South America, like near South American coast, and so here there is low pressure. Near uh, Australian coast, there is high pressure. And generally, what happens? See, this is low pressure, high pressure. And then again here, it will be high pressure in masculine high, normal scenario. But it is high pressure and then again, a low pressure is created here. So what happens? Because of this, our monsoon gets affected. Generally, to make you understand this, see, understand. Let's say here it is a Tibetan region. In, upward here, it is a Tibetan region. It is a low pressure zone. So from here, air will rise up and it will, on the, what do you say, on the upper, in the upper atmosphere, it will go here and it will descend here. And if this is a high pressure reason, then from here at the surface level or subsurface level, it will go here and this will lead to the formation of Southeast monsoon. But this whole thing gets distorted during Indian monsoon. So sea surface temperature of South American coast increases, right? We are talking about El Nino. This is a phenomena because uh, there is less upwelling at, and here there is also called Peruvian current. Less upwelling of cold water from below the surface to cool. Now the clouds and rainstorms associated with warm ocean waters also shift towards east. That means here. So what happens during El Nino, there is what is it, much higher rainfall in the South American coast and the rainfall is much lesser on the Australian coast and same way it is much lesser on Indian coast as well. So El Nino has a debilitating or uh, what is it, debilitating impact. It reduces rainfall in our in Indian, in the Indian mainland, right? And it occurs every three to five years. So it has a, a de 
what is the word devalidating impact or not that's not so good impact indian ocean dipole is favorable for indian climate and one thing which you need to understand is before we do that let's see a let's see a figure let's see let's try to see because figure if you see a figure na you remember it in a much better manner right so this is your al nino scenario so as we have talked about in normal year what happens uh, warmth see this area is getting warm equatorial winds gather warm water near australian coast and there is cold water around south coast of south america but in al nino year what happens easterly winds we will see that tropical easterly this is majorly see one thing you have to understand monsoon is not totally understood indian monsoon is not totally understood the research is still going on it's 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 a what is a mysterious phenomena what we have gathered up until now is thing which is very important for indian monsoon is tropical easterly and it weakens during al nino so easterly winds weaken warm water moves towards south america as we can see here in the Peru peruvian coast so there is higher rainfall here right now so again as we have talked earlier tropical easterly jet it is a meteorological term referring to an upper level easterly wind that starts in a late june and continues now it plays an important role in starting southwest monsoon as we have discussed earlier suppose this is india and this is your uh, let's say madagascar so here it is mascarene high normal scenario this is mascarene high this is a high pressure zone this is a low pressure zone over tibet so air this what is rises above and goes towards this at the what is it Uh, upper what do you say at the upper sphere level or upper atmospheric level they are going towards here now here from high pressure zone at the sub surface level or surface level they are moving towards india and this is causing what do you say this is led to the this leads to the onset of monsoon and this is primarily happening because of tropical easterly jet right so it plays an important role in starting southwest monsoon this particular monsoon and jet descends over indian ocean near madagascar which is called mascarene high right and intensifies its high pressure cell so as to move as southwest monsoon this is southwest monsoon right so that's it dude so again what you need to understand is you don't need to do phd over here tropical easterly jet brings plays a pivotal role in southwest monsoon don't get confused it with it with westerlies westerlies helps in bringing winter rains over punjab or areas of punjab and haryana cool dude now let's start now let's talk about brahmaputra brahmaputra is called yarlung sangpo in china which means purifier it later forms brahmaputra in india it enters arunachal pradesh and remember this one this is important this has been asked earlier it enters arunachal pradesh as dihang or siang so dihang and siang are the name of brahmaputra in arunachal pradesh and it has originated in angsi glacier which is near tibet right cool dude now let's talk about rift valley so rift valley is what see there are two types of plate boundaries in fact three types of plate boundaries convergent divergent and trans transform boundaries where they slide over each other like st andreas fault so rift valley is formed along divergent plate boundary so when there are diverging plate boundaries there are suppose there are two plates and they are diverging so first thing first is formed which is called rift valley and after that there will be a nascent sea which will be formed and then ocean will be formed so this rift valley is a linear shape lowland between highlands or mountain regions now just a second let's see this see so this is east african rift so what will happen first of all there will be a rift created then slowly and suddenly or slowly and eventually this whole part will get cut apart so there will be the africa will be broken apart so this will be nas means what do you say first of all rift valley then nascent sea the rift valley then nascent sea then ocean will be created this whole region will get bifurcated and then there will be an ocean here so this is the pattern this is how this whole thing it's what you can say this whole thing happens now what they have said it is a linear shape lowland between highlands and mountain ranges it is formed along divergent plate boundary we have discussed it and damodar river in chota nagpur plateau flows through a rift valley so damodar river and how will you see it let's see this so as we have discussed we'll just see a what is representation of rift valley how does a rift valley looks as you can see here hope you can see it see this uh just a second so you can see that it is a low land between highlands as you can see here see this is a low land area this area is low land and it is occupying it is lying between two highlands 
right so this low land area and this is a part of divergent plate boundary understand this africa is splitting into two because of the great african rift valley right and damodar river what is a damodar river just a second so as you can see this damodar river which is in chota nagpur plateau and close to uh, when it's jharkhand and west bengal it is flowing through a rift valley so so you they can ask you so you have to be very aware regarding this so this damodar river this particular river so this is flowing in chota nagpur plateau and it is flowing through a rift valley cool dude so now again Uh, there was one particular french territory which is new Calis caledonia or calis or what do you say how however you pronounce it new caledonia it is a french territory and there was a referendum which ha happened here whether they wanted independence from france or not because they are much much further apart from france right and what they did they voted against independence they said that they want to be a part of france they are very happy with france and where it is located you have to be very aware because they ask upsc does ask these so it is located in south pacific ocean now if you want to see it let's see this thing so where is our cutipi new caledonia you will just see it right now so it's near australia you will see that it's very near what is it it's near to australia and it's in south pacific ocean they can ask you they have what is it upsc has previously asked about where is this particular trench and all those things so they can always ask you when whatever thing is in news they can always ask you so as you can see this is new caledonia and it's near australia it's in south pacific ocean so you have to remember it and they have voted against independence they want to be a part of france now again wait equatorial region so like suppose this is your equator 0 degree right so this wet equatorial region and wet equatorial forest also they lie about 12 degree latitude of equator so up until 12 degree north and 12 degree south you can find this wet equatorial regions what does wet equatorial region means that all year long there will be wooding say uh, rainfall every day almost every day you can see equatorial forest there and all those things now we are talking important things right now so we'll leave some part and i will focus on important areas right again so see this thing jordan does not open out to moderate mediterranean, mediterranean sea sorry sometimes i stammer i don't know why so jordan does not open out to mediterranean sea and why i have written this because i think upsc has asked this multiple times which of these countries what do you say borders mediterranean sea so what you have to understand is lebanon israel all these countries are bordering mediterranean sea but jordan does not open out to mediterranean sea and if you want to see it we can also see it so let's see jordan where jordan is because when you see maps only then only you realize that yes jordan is indeed not opening out to mediterranean sea so we can see any particular example we can see any particular map suppose i want to see this one so as you can see here see all these israel lebanon even certain portion of syria egypt all these will be bordering mediterranean sea but jordan is not bordering mediterranean sea and it is important to because they have asked it multiple number of times so you have to be very very aware of it cool what next uh tides shall we read tides today now let's discuss we will discuss tides in the next class we'll talk about spring tide neap tide how does it help in navigation and all those stuff what happens in spring tide what happens in neap tide what are the factors so we'll do that in the next session fine so that's it for this particular geography video and the next video again i will be sharing certain portion of my notes thank you